The Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding, Episode 3, The Yin-Yang of Bodybuilding. Welcome to the Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding. This is Episode 3, The Yin-Yang of Building. And today, uh, we're going to have a guest speaker, uh, Stephen Hersey, who's uh, Dr. Fitness USA. And we're going to take his, have his wife, Batista, do the introduction. So over to you. Welcome back to the show. This is going to be an interesting show. Hi, Dashan. I'm so excited to be here and share with you about the yin-yang of bodybuilding. This is something that was very new for me. I had never heard any of this conversation prior to meeting Stephen, Dr. Fitness USA. At first, it was a kind of strange, the conversation. I didn't understand really what it all meant because I came from a, a professional uh, dance background. And for me, it was all about um, doing more and, you know, the show must go on. And so the conversation that you're about to hear is um, may strike you a little bit different or you might be puzzled. but. Trust me that in the 10 years that I've been now studying, researching, practicing, and teaching all these principles, there is a lot, a lot of wisdom uh, behind this yin-yang of bodybuilding, which uh, I, I'm i going to bring on Dr. Fitness USA himself to talk to you about this because he, there's only him that can talk to him, uh, to talk about this with such ex expertise because he's, he, he lives, he walks the talk. And so um, if you don't have any other question, I'd like to bring him on. Is that okay to bring him on bring right him now? Bring him on. Okay. So Absolutely. Dr. Fitness USA, the foremost expert on strength training and body design, talking to you about the yin yang of bodybuilding. Here he comes. So how's your day going? The day is unfolding as it should. Steven, welcome to the show. It's exciting to have you on the show, have you as a, a captive audience so we could have this experience for the next hour or so. So tell me, what about this yin-yang uh, bodybuilding? What does that even mean? Well, we, we know that we have male and female energy, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what does that mean? In males and females, we have male and female energy. So according to the way the brain is, for left hand, uh, right-handed males, we usually have a small brain passage between left and right side of the brain. So we do things uh, one thing at a time. And for females who have... I can relate to that. Yeah, don't ask me to multitask. Yeah, with that, uh, uh, the short would be multitasking. So for females, they have a large brain passage between left and right side of the brain, and they can multitask. That means, so let's look at the dynamics for males. You know, they uh, for males, for for, for males, okay, let's look at the dynamics. For males, we're safe when we're in our thinking mode. Thinking, solving problems. The part that's not safe for men is if we're in our feelings, okay? So it's very important for men to stay in their thinking mode. So what happens is women, because they have this large connective tissue, they can go between left and right side of the brain at a split second. So that means that they can be in their feelings and having a good time. And in a split second, they can go back to their thinking side. Right-handed males don't have that ability. If they want to stay in their maleness, they need to be able to solve problems, to think clearly, they can't really jump from their feelings to their thinking because in their feeling side, there's no talking. It's a silent world. So it affects us in many different ways. 
when men are artists, they're in their female. They're feeling things. When women are artists, they create in their intellectual mind and it comes out as a feeling. So if males want to take their power, they need to understand that being in their feelings at the same time as trying to be in their thinking doesn't really do the job. And so it translates into training. So if you ask me a question, I'll elaborate on that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. To yeah, I don't want to lose it, no. So bring me back, and then I'm going to clarify on what that looks like. Okay, so I'll help yeah. you. So Brad wants to go to the yeah, gym. So I think. Okay, watch this. So yeah. fitness composed so of many. Summer. Say it again. No, go for it. The fitness composed of many different things. Okay. And it depends which activity you want. And some are more masculine than others. Or, But when men go to the gym and they want to take care of their body and they have a lot of testosterone or younger, it's usually um, ego. They want to be stronger. They want to be uh, look good, things like that. But what happens is in later time in life when they go to the gym, what they don't understand is that working out, unless you're an athlete for a purpose, is a feminine experience. So here we go. When you comb your hair, when you wash your body, when you brush your teeth, that is absolutely feminine for men. It's not a male activity. It's a feminine activity. Is that, Stephen, because you're actually in your feeling body when you're doing it? You're not in your head? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, in spirituality and things like that, I want to get too heavy. But, you know, in a lot of courses, they get, say to men, you need to learn how to express your feelings. Well, when men start to express their feelings, first of all, they don't take care of women because they're concerned about their feelings. And uh, expressing their feelings makes them very unsafe in a savory world. Because the male energy says what he thinks, what he wants. The female energy says how she feels and what she doesn't want. Because when you're talking to a woman, she wants everything. So a lot of times when you're talking to women, they say what they want. But they want everything, so they don't get what they want. But if they know what they don't want, then they can set standards. So now we go back to the gym. So because a man is using his feminine energy when he's younger it's a little bit different because everything works but when you're in your 40s or 50s and your hormones are changing and uh, you're producing less testosterone or male qualities what happens is working out as a male attribute you're in your female so eight out of ten men don't have a solid business plan of what to do in the gym they're always going to gym, and uh, they're not concerned how they look. They're interested in putting as much muscle on their body as possible. So it's kind of like painting a car, and the frame is all bent. So when I personally go to the gym, when I see men in their 40s, especially in their 50s and their 60s, I don't see anybody smiling. They're on the wrong machine frowning and making faces and hurting their body because they don't know how to adjust through the years or the ages. Okay, there's a way of entering the body where you can balance out your hormones. And in prescription strength training, we teach men never do anything that feels uncomfortable. It's the power of the program that gets them the result. So for females, when they're younger, especially the generation has changed, they're doing everything. So what they're doing is they're taking their aerobic activity like in dance and they're transferring it to the gym, which is a totally different type of activity and a different relationship to their body. So if they were doing a thousand movements in dance, now they're going to the gym and they're doing a thousand movements for their legs. That means many different exercises. 
So they have no conception of why they're really there because the gym allows you an opportunity to strengthen your nervous system, to relieve stress, and to actually build a symmetrical body. That means if your legs are overpowering your upper body, then you need to balance it out. You need to reduce the legs and build the upper body so it matches the legs. It's called symmetry. But I don't see that happening in the gym. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm yeah, going to give you how that. really interesting. Yeah, so I give you how, uh, and then you can ask me some questions. I give you how that translates. Okay, so we have a student. We won't name her, and now she's checking in. And uh, Batista calls me over, and where she uh, puts me on uh, the camera, and I'm having a conversation with her. And Batista says I've adjusted her program, and it says to do a, a leg press. Before she was doing like. Uh, a few sets like times eight, okay, three sets times eight, and let's say it's 100, 100, 100. Now she changed the, I changed the script, and I put eight slash, eight slash, eight slash, and I upped it to 130 pounds. So the person says, oh, my God, how can I do 24 reps with 130 pounds? Okay, so watch this. If I told you I wanted you to do 130 pounds, 24 reps, you'd be exhausted too. Now, if I tell you, why don't you just relax and you're in this comfortable machine and, you know, you do eight and then you stop for a section without putting the weight down and then you do another eight and then would that be okay? You say, oh, yeah, that's not a problem. So you see the woman is in her mail. She's not paying attention to the script because when I look at the script, I don't see 24 reps. But she's insisting that she sees mm -hmm. 24 reps. Why? Because her head is multitasking. That means she's going, oh, it's three times eight. It must be doing 24. The so training is set up so that it protects your nervous system by keeping you focused and to stay on track. Because my experience is when women come in, they're down – you know, maybe 70% of their physical body strength, and they say, well, how is that possible? Uh, I'm a strong woman. Yeah, you're a strong woman intellectually, but your body is weak. So what we have is, without a program, you have women coming into the gym, and they're down about 70 8%, almost 80%. So they go to a piece of equipment, and, of course, uh, some gyms have better equipment than others, so the uh, the movement of the machine actually is working, okay? So the woman sits on the machine, and it could be a guy. This happens to guys, too, and they're pressing on the weight, and when you look at the weight, it's only like 10 pounds. It's the wrong machine for their body. Their body can't process the weight comfortably, so they're just going through the emotion. So you're going in a gym and you're seeing women who are uh, actually taking better care of themselves because they're exercising, but they're not producing muscle mass, they're not strengthening their nervous system, and uh, as they get older, they're going more into their male and they're very difficult to deal with. Just like the woman I just talked to you about. She's insisting that's 24 reps until I have a conversation with her. And I've done that to a male, too. I've come up to a younger man who's, like, super strong, and he's doing an exercise, the leg press. And he's doing about 600 pounds, and he's doing, like, 12 reps. And he says, you got a moment? And he looks at me kind of strange. Okay. Well, first of all, your back or angle of the bench is not in the right position, so your spine isn't protected. And second of all, your feet are in the wrong position. And third of all, the movement at the top is insignificant. It's the movement to the back, the back part of the exercise, because when the knees come down, it strengthens your hips and it makes your chest puff out which is a better ergonomics. So I say, well, how many reps are you doing? Because you're huffing and puffing. I says, well, how about trying this? You know, uh, can you do, can you do uh, like eight? 
And then to relax, eight, relax. You know, I did this with a guy that did a thousand pounds and he did 29 reps. And he said, what's next? You understand? So there's a different energy that you can play with within the body. But people are mm -hmm. all in this performance mode. The way it's the system is set up is, is you go in the gym and you hammer your body till uh, you're blue in the face and you sweat and you make all these faces and now you worked out. That's not prescription strength training. To me, bodybuilding, what we're trying to do right now is to introduce it as a health component to reducing women's age 15 to 20 years and giving men back their maleness so that they can take better care of the women. Because I find when men find out that women are really smart, most men do, the women will automatically do all the work. She has no standards to get the men to do the work because one, her body is weak and the male's body is weak. So prescription strain training has a powerful component to balance out the moments. So here I can tell you from a, week, uh, a real experience, in the gym, I personally am trying to create relationships. So I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for help. It's, I'm kind of, it's like I'm being kind to the neighbor. So the man standing beside me has really powerful lower legs, but his upper body looks like it never trained a day in its life. So he looks at me, he says to me, oh, this is so hard on my knees and my legs, and I, you know, I... I said, hey, listen, would you be open? I can show you how to do it in a way that uh, would impact you. So I adjust his body, and I, uh, I completely different the way he's using it. Because the way he's using it, he's going nowhere. So the point of the matter is, now he does it. Now I correct the range of motion, so he's being educated in the rest of motion. He gets off, he has the light bulb go up, and it's, man, that was really great. He says, yeah, but I'm 62 years old. I said, well, well, how about rearranging your program so that you can transfer all your positive energy to your upper body that can still be developed? This is very typical. Oh, I'm okay. I'm only in the gym because I want to feel good. Oh, I'm only in the gym. You see, he's like a girl. All the guys, when I go into the girl, although they look masculine, are like girls. I have to have a prescription program so that I can be on track doing what I'm supposed to do, because if I be influenced by what I'm seeing in the gym today, I'm among a bunch of girls. They're trying to be like they were 20 years ago. They're, they're forcing their body. They don't even know the machine hasn't adjusted. They're, they're, you know, they're like chicken with heads. And the opposite is you have women in the gym that are like not overweight, so to speak. And like I said, when you look at the weights that they're using, it's only like 10 pounds. And sometimes they're using like a calf machine. They're trying to exercise their thighs. They, they don't even read the instructions. See, I'm a guy. If I saw a guy doing a great exercise, and I, I have no problem with that, I say, hey, man, that's a really great way of you working out. Can you show me how to do it more? The masculine would say, can you show me another exercise that I can do better? But between the women and the men, the dynamics is just isn't there. So my suggestion to women is to take hold of the reins and start to uh, look into prescription strength training so you can take back your power. Because as you take on age, the climb becomes higher. Like when we get back a calendar or I review the weights or something like that, the person doesn't know that when they started, it's a whole new world, and it's just like running. You know, they start off, and they ran a few steps, and now they can run a mile, and they can do a lot of different things. It takes a little bit of time to conditioning. But the training is a way to better yourself in the gym. So in the prescription training that we have, it's run as a school that teaches women how to do things properly, and it teaches men how to do prop, uh, things properly. And men, when I'm re so when I'm reviewing the calendar or things like that, the person is saying, you know, this is like really hard, 
You know, and I find I have to rest and then I have to keep going. So you know what that tells me? It tells me that the person doesn't eat properly. They cannot find an activity that's as simple as what I'm giving them. So it's a mindset. So uh, I changed a prescription for Batista in a chest press. It's a brand new machine. There are two different machines in the gym. Everybody uses the one to the left. She uses the one to the right. And in using the machine, there are seven different things she has to do before she pushes on those handles to make the weight go. So she starts off with a very low weight, but she has a prescription. The third time around from doing 30 pounds, she's now doing 80. So what I'm getting at is 80, weight is a factor. Now I'm not a pro bodybuilder, but when I do a rear delt machine, okay, look at what people do. The woman does 20 pounds incorrectly. The guys who are really strongly built do 90. And Stephen Hersey goes in at 295 pounds. The, what I'm getting at is when you have a prescription and you start to follow the steps, just like a chess piece, you're going to get to the weight you're supposed to to produce a result. So going in the gym and using your ego to try and bully your body isn't going to work. It. So when I go in the gym, I don't sit there and say, oh, I'm going to breathe, I'm going to think colors. What I'm going to do is use my natural ability. You ever sit in traffic? Oh, my God, there's traffic. You can get really angry. Then all of a sudden it opens up and then you smile. You have all these expressions in the gym or you want to get an ice cream bowl. I come in the gym and I get angry. Oh, my God, this gym is so stuffy. I hate this gym. That's positive energy. Then all of a sudden it opens up. I say, my God, am I lucky today. And I smile and I'm dancing with my buddy. I can have all these emotions. But when I sit on this piece of equipment and I look at the program, I execute the weight. I don't have to do anything. I have a map. A map is there's two types of people. They have a map, but they don't know where they're going. I have a map. I can stop for lunch. I can take a drink of water. I can go to the bathroom. I come back and just keep going. I do that all the time. I ask the person, well, how many sets you have? He doesn't even talk to me, okay? <sighs> I can I can be I get really angry, right? That's a good emotion. <laughs> I can argue with him. That'll be a good emotion too. That's negotiation skills. Or I'll just go for a walk around the gym. By the time I get back, he'll probably be gone. Okay. It happens every single time. He's gone. I got all this machine to myself. You see, you have all these emotions and energy, and you can have them all, and it's okay. Sitting there and being serious means nothing to me because what I'm doing is where is the what is the uh, exercise going to do for your body? How much weight are you going to uh, lift? And there's a rhythm. You have to keep moving. See, it's, the body has a rhythm. If you stay, so, so what's interesting was you first do, if we have like five sets and you do the first three sets or four sets, your brain is processing the movement. That's okay. When it says times five and you use heavier weight, you feel nothing. You execute it. By the weight, time the weight is, you're pushing on the weight, it's already moving you forward or backwards. You don't think. See, thinking is ahead of time. If you're climbing a mountain and you want to reach to the top, you have to have the right equipment. But once you start to make the descent, you're not asking yourself silly questions. Well, I mean, it's a, a pretty far down. What happens if I fall? You execute it. So the training teaches you to be very um, aware of your surroundings. It teaches you to check your equipment. It teaches you to stay super focused. See, because you know, years ago, I used to see people that were very muscular. They come into the gym. It's kind of interesting. And I say, wow, how do they get that way? So you can get very confused what's going on in the gym. 
What I didn't know is that he's uh, pedaling uh, 10 miles to work from Hollywood and he's eating uh, roast beef sandwiches. So he's burning it up, calories. So one last thing I want to bring up is that when people, when people do all this aerobic activity and men do that and women do that, it means nothing to me. Their body is getting older by the minute. Like yesterday when I was in the gym, I was seeing a big strong man and he's on the treadmill. I'm asking myself, why are you at the, it, we, I didn't really speak to him. In my head, I'm saying, why are you on the treadmill? You've got 40 minutes to work on your body, and you're on a lousy treadmill jumping up and down, which means nothing. So people have, uh, what I'm trying to do is to change the, the way people rock and roll in the gym and how they can take better care of themselves. It's not meant to put them down. It's, it, I'm, uh, out of 20 people, I'm looking for the person that has that aha moment like yourself or Baptiste that says, tell me more or show me how to do it better. So uh, let well, me stop Steve, there. I'm clear, I'm clear. Why don't, Why don't you, you think a robot is the way to go? Okay, so when you go into a gym, let's say a physical team, what is it that you're looking for? Do you want to be uh, physically fit? You know, that means that you can go in, do some exercises, do some stretching, and uh, go on the treadmill. Okay. Do you want to go in and actually build some muscle? Or do you want to build some muscle and create a balanced body that's working on your posture, strengthening your nervous system, educating yourself how to use the machines or the adjustments properly. People go into the gym, it's physical fitness. Now you only have 40 minutes. Why right. would you go into why why would you go in unless you have a heart condition, of course? Why would you go in and spend time on a treadmill? Your treadmill just passes oxygen through your body, but it has nothing to do with rearranging your body and giving you its increased strength. So you have people that go in the gym, they're doing all their aerobics. If you look at their upper body, you see they have no upper body. The gym is there yeah, for you to build the body. Yeah. So what you're saying is that, that if you want to have longevity, if you want to have balance and symmetry, if you want to look like Leonardo da Vinci's sketch of the ideal human body, then there's a certain way that you need to go about doing this. And that's not running around the gym and throwing weights around or trying to be the best he-man there. That there's actual steps uh, and a process that needs to be followed in a logical order to balance out the body, one part balance to the other. So what you're saying then is, so that's really why you, we start off with the, the exercises you have people, which is really strengthening the lower, you know, the lower body so that you're well grounded. So you're, you have the strength to carry your upper body. Is that, am I getting this right? Is that? Very good. Yes. So, so that's what you're teaching people is even the ex, every, each ex, ex, other exercise. So for the 45 minutes in the gym, you're going to come out a much more robust human being because you're building on the last time you're in the gym. And over time, you're going to have symmetry in your body. You're going to have a strong uh, neuromuscular system. You'll be able to uh, counteract uh, viruses and diseases and influences like that. You'll be able to have a higher metabolism rate. You'll be able to digest your food properly. You have a better sex drive. You'll look 10, 15 years younger. So these are all byproducts in the gym that if you use a prescription and you're aware and you're not being Mr. Super Guy, but focused on why you're there, you're going to get incredible results. That's exciting to me. I mean, I never understood this at all when I was in the gym when I was 21. I just thought we just threw weights around. So the fact that I could just use, you know, do press with 120 pounds to warm up to me was just the best thing in the world. I had no idea what I was doing, right? None yeah, whatsoever. Okay. So, so people listening to this, this is a whole prescription. This is a really a way to get in touch with your body in a new way, which helps you really build on what you have, but also to bring, like Stephen says, the symmetry into the body. 
So Stephen, that was a great explanation. It really helped me understand the difference between the yin and the yang, how women would approach things in the gym compared to the men. And I've always wondered why these guys with so many muscles in the gym are really, I don't know, they, they seem really strong, but I don't feel they're strong. They almost seem like they could be blown over, even though they have the most beautiful, incredible muscles. It, it, there's something that's strong. There's there's something that doesn't seem to be in balance, and I could never figure out what that was. You're what you're saying is because. Go ahead. Yeah. So what you're saying is they're just approaching it the wrong way, and there isn't that core strength that you're talking about. Even though the muscles are there, they're not getting the strength that they need to even support their body in the right way. Okay. So I'll give you an example, which will re help really help. So. I'm at the uh, Trump golf course, and I run into a man uh, that's nice looking. You know, he's obviously muscular, okay, and, he, and he's walking his dog. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. There are many muscular men walking around with little dogs. I can never understand that. You know why? Because when men put their love and attention on animals, it means they're not getting love in their real life. So they carry them around in a suitcase, they carry them on a leash, and now he's walking in the park. Okay. I find out that he's training at LA Fitness, the same gym as me. Okay. So now uh, I, uh, I was curious. He said he had a wife. We're looking to socialize. So now I'm at the gym and he's there with his wife. His wife has good genetics. What it means by that is she's blessed probably with pretty good legs, except they're not really in shape. Her upper body is from a fat person, but she has the potential to change that. But he dominates her because now he found a workout partner. The man will never say, Stephen, I see that you're with Batista. You're the best in the world. What you do, do you have any ideas for my wife? So the wife, like a sheep, follows the husband. So I'm going to show you something. He's doing what we call a side raise. You know, it's a machine, and you lift your elbows up, okay? It's supposed to work the side of your shoulders, okay? So he's doing it like this. You see this part, how it's lifting up? He's a big male guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, you ever see these guys go like this? So that's how he trains, you see? He doesn't even have the brains to use one arm at a time and do it comfortably. You see, the energy would go to his arm and he would process the energy, but now he's doing it like this, see? And if you look at the weight, he's doing 30 pounds. Stephen Hersey is doing 190. He doesn't know how to adjust his body to where he is in his 60s. So now his wife comes along, and she doesn't even fit the machine, but she's, she, she's doing this. She can't even lift her arms up. And that's how they run their training program. It's always like that. The men will not help women go forward. The women have to get more uh, educated on how to reduce their age as they go along. They got to stop following their husbands and their boyfriends and their personal trainers. They have to find their own balance. We teach people never to do anything that's uncomfortable. Never. I go to the gym uh, a lot of times with Batista, but we don't do the same program. So in relationships, we won't get too much in relationships, but you have a circle here, which is me and then there's a certain as you, and then we come together as a we. In the gym, they're all we's. They're all creeping up on each other. They're, they're retarding the women from taking better care of themselves. I don't care if the guy's in shape or whatever. He's not an expert in what I'm talking about. He's old school. And so the women are learning bad habits, or they have a bad attitude. Bad attitude means... They don't smile, they don't talk to people, they don't interact with these people, and they're not learning how to use the equipment in a gym that has $500,000 of tools to whip your body together, except they're on a treadmill in Southern California. How do you figure that out? The women are the yeah. ones that take uh, action. 
So here's a, you know, in relationships, the women are God gifted. They have an insight that you can't beat. So sometimes you have to let them breathe or offer them gifts. If they have an idea or they'd like to, uh, their body better and there's an expert out that can assist them, you have to ask them. You think it'd be a good idea to speak to this person and see if you can further your training. You know, what they do is they have a training partner, just like their dog. It doesn't work for them. And being skinny for well, women. Steven, I, I, yeah. I know that we're uh, digressing a bit, not because I'm not enjoying it, but we are supposed to be doing the yin yang of uh, bodybuilding and you're into okay. relationships. And I love what you're saying. You've got okay, so, so much go passion back to about the energy. So, but, well, okay. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's so, so important. You can see it in the gym. So I really appreciate that. And we're going to go into more detail on that in a, in a forthcoming episode about how to build relationships in the gym. But this is your opportunity to empower your significant other to be able to come forward and be the best that she can be. And the way you can do that is help her be herself in the gym, which is not following your program, but helping her create her own program. Or working with Steven or working with Batista to have the program that suits her body type and where she's at. So as we wrap up in this part of the show, back to the yin and yang and the different ways in which men and, and women process information really determines how we approach uh, how it is that we do things in the gym and, and the sequence in which we do things. So just as we wrap it up, could you give us the, uh, sort of a review of the key points of that? yin yang balance that you wanted everybody to understand uh well when it comes to males working out in the gym they ought to check the equipment and do things that actually make sense to their body and that could be by uh, doing a different sequence or doing a different exercise you see they have to what they don't know is what's really missing that's the, one of the key issues and women need to know that they shouldn't be i don't like the word should that because of the stress of society, when women stay in their intellectual mind 24 hours a day, you know, they're thinking, they have to go, they go to work, they have children, they're thinking all the time. So what happens is it becomes overwhelming where they can't stop thinking, okay? When women stay in their mind 24 hours a day, they create an unhealthy condition that weakens their immune system. So when they go to the gym and they're doing the treadmills and they're forcing their body there or they're hiring a personal trainer, they're continuing that destruction. So in prescription strength training, we create the bridge so women get out of their thinking process and back into their center of universe where these chakras are all lined up properly and they learn to waltz with their body. They learn to do exquisite movements just like in dance. You can dance with your body, but if you just go in aimlessly and hit different pieces of equipment, you are in your mail, so that's very destructive. It means your body can never rest. Men don't understand that. Men, right. Women keep on going till they get sick. They need to have a program that executes uh, exercise in a fashion that produces a calm and peacefulness in their body. And the reason that we can increase women's strength 20 to 50% in 20 minutes, the phenomena is when women can lift that type of weight or make that increase, the phenomena is they go quiet. There's nobody screaming at them, there's nobody yelling at them, but when they realize they have this ability, they go instantly quiet. It's like the greatest aha moment for them. Like they just got like the gold medal. See when we when is we that, Stephen because uh, is that because um, there's more grounding the body grounds and all that stress is a way of coming out of the body and therefore the mind just what's happening. Yeah, the 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 the, the, the it's a grounding of the body. See, like in Baptiste, just settles. Yeah, like in Batista, I keep it uh, at a mi uh, moderate weight because of the way her body is built. And because of her age, she doesn't need all that horsepower. She just needs enough to send energy to her upper body. 
So in a leg press, you might be at 375, okay? That's three plates and 25 in each set. But I can make it work because we can do multiple angles. We can do multiple foot positions without any resting. So we're continuously drawing blood into the muscle. And she doesn't have to experience uh, heavier weight. Now we go into the gym and I make her a, a prescription because on one gym, it's hammer strength. She doesn't like hammer strength. You go in another gym that's like fitness. They're both the same company, but they're built different. So we go and we go to the gym of her choice, which is life fitness, because she's learned how to be more comfortable or how to read the music to her body. In seven mm -hmm. minutes, she's doing 500 pounds and she's laughing. She's having a good time. That's a 150 pound increase and she's doing multiple sets and she can't stop. She's having a great time. How do you figure that? Because I told her to That's let go and relax. So that's the most amazing thing I can tell you today. Even with men, there's a thousand pounds on the machine, and I whisper to them and I say, relax. Total opposite to personal training. Do not make faces, do not bend your chin down, cut oxygen to your vein. Relax. You have an inherent ability that you haven't even reached yet. And once you feel it, you don't have to always do heavier weight, but you can transfer that success into other areas of your life. Well, Stephen, thank you ever so much. That was the best wrap up ever. That was great. So thank you. So we'll thank get you. Batista Happy. back on and we'll learn what the next show is all about. Absolutely. Hi. So that was Hi. Well, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that was just grand. It's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's I learned lots, and I think everybody will learn lots. So thank you ever so much for having Stephen on. And so, what are we uh, looking forward to in the, in the next episode? Yeah. So in the next episode, we are going to add another component, which has to do with posture, which is one of the probably most overlooked and misunderstood aspect of um, a positive healthy lifestyle and so we're going to add that component we're going to look at the the um uh you know what happens when you have bad posture but what we're also going to do is we are going to tie it in with the chakras because this is the esoteric principles of bodybuilding so we take it from you know as above so below so we want to make all the connections uh, to uh, acquire a better understanding, not only about physical health, but how that might affect the other aspect of our other bodies, our esoteric bodies, our bodies of light, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to, um, that's what we're going to talk about next week. Well, and, it sounds grand. So thank you ever so much. Uh, and, and. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted yeah. to add something. I wanted to invite the audience because I know we're talking about a lot of things uh, that some maybe some people are familiar with or maybe not. But as you have questions or things that you might not understand in the show, I would like to invite uh, the audience to participate on the Facebook and ask questions, and then we can actually uh, answer some of the questions that you might have. So I wanted to just open it up to, you know, to whoever is listening that there might be an opportunity to have your questions answered. Great. So if anybody's li anybody and everybody listening to this, either in the podcast, the, U the Academy YouTube channel or live on Facebook Live, head over to the Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding on Facebook and we're carrying on the questions and the answers there. Put in what your request, we can get back to you with highlights about what the next shows are and also to answer your questions. So until next week, be healthy, wealthy, and wise, and we'll see you same time, same place. Bye for okay. now. Bye-bye. See you next week. In this 13-episode series, the Esoteric Principles of Bodybuilding, The Missing Links to Fitness Consciousness, with your host, Batista Germond, Master Builder, 
bodybuilder and designer is co-hosted and produced by Tyson Bannigan and his guides www.thewellnessshow.ca and see the same time same place every Friday 2 p.m. Pacific time 5 p.m. Eastern Standard see you then bye for now